Welcome to the next lecture in metal additive manufacturing. In the past we have seen in depth knowledge about basics of laser, basics of electron beam, electron machine setup, laser machine setup and we also have seen wire feed parameters. Now in this lecture we will start focusing more on powder bed fusion method, what are all the different process parameters. See for a machine to run a machine you will have several inputs to be given. What is the influence of these inputs with respect to the output? So that is what we try to see the process parameters. In this lecture we will be trying to cover in additive manufacturing what are all the different process parameters which are used. Let it be laser, let it be electron beam, let it be wire. So the next is beam scanning strategies. You have a beam, it is electron beam or laser beam. So this beam has to build a layer. So in a layer you also have a thickness. So moment there is a thickness then you have to have strategies of fabricating or to create the pattern. So those things are called as beam scanning strategies and then you will have parameters for powder bed fusion and directed energy deposition. Next we will try to see powder properties for powder bed fusion method directed energy deposition and binder jetting. Then methods of powder particle production, this is also very important because this directly influences the shape and the size and also the topology, topology of the powder particles. Why is this very important? Because this is going to influence your flowability. The next one is wire properties for directed energy deposition, then ambient parameters which are required for both the process, then we will try to see geometric and specific parameters, then finally we will start looking into supporting structures for powder bed fusion method. When we take any process, when we take any process, this is the process, you will have input and then you will have a output. In the process you might have energy, you might have manpower, you might have materials, whatever it is all these things you might have heat energy. All these things are applied in the process and finally what you get out is the output. So, any process will have an input parameter, output parameter and the process physics. So additive manufacturing also has the same. In additive manufacturing the process parameters can be divided into three categories, input parameters, output parameters and process physics which is involved in it. What is the physics? Here it is centering and melting are the physics. Okay. What are the input parameters? Input parameters can be material. So when we talk about material, powder rheology, powder size, powder shape, powder topography, chemical composition, its electrical structures, all these things play a very important role. When we talk about process, there are several but we have taken only significant, one is beam power, the other one is layer thickness. I would say etc, etc. There are many more but these two just for your understanding. Beam power, beam power is it varies, it is a continuous laser, it will be talked in kilojoule. When we talk about pulsed laser, we talk in megajoules or we talk in uh, kilowatts, megawatts, gigawatts, etc, etc. When it is pulsed laser, layer thickness we vary from 50 microns to 100 microns. Next is ambient build chamber temperature. 
See this is a very important thing when you have a bed where in which you are trying to expose laser this is a bed where the part is getting made. So, you have a laser which tries to hit at the surface. So, now the temperature at this point will go maybe for to 700 degrees Celsius and then the next thing what it comes is from 700 degrees it comes to room temperature which is 35 degrees Celsius. So, you see here there is a big gradient which happens from 700 to 35 which is around about 650 degrees reduction which happens in a short instant of time. In order to get out of this gradient why because this gradient will try to induce thermal residual stresses. These thermal residual stresses will lead or may lead to crack formation. In order to avoid this what we do is we try to have from 700 degrees Celsius we try to take it to 400 degrees Celsius, 400 to 100 degrees Celsius, 100 to 35 degrees Celsius. So, here this is called the smooth gradation happening from the higher temperature to room temperature. So, here if we want to do it we would try to have a build chamber where there is a temperature control. So, how do you do it? You have a build uh, platform and this build platform will be placed inside a container. In this container placed in this container, in this container you will try to see you have a gas or something else which tries to make the temperature slightly higher than the room temperature and slowly, 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 slowly you can try to bring it down. The next one is the gas because when we try to do many of the metals melt or center it always has a habit of getting diffused with oxygen. So, oxides get formed very easily in some cases carbides get formed very easily. So, in that case what we do is we fill this with gas and try to prevent them from oxidation or carburization. So, then the ambient these two are the input parameters machine attribute motion system accuracy at what accuracy does this motion happen what is the minimum resolution it can do. So, this is resolution minimum resolution the least count which it can move that is called as minimum resolution and then it also talks about repeatability. Repeatability is the other important parameter when I move left or right how is it moving this motion system accuracy also tries to dictate the machine built the drives what you use the belts what you use. So, if there is a loosening then you will always have inaccuracies while moving next the maximum velocity with which it can move. So, these two etcetera I have written these two are one of the major parameters we also saw in this there is a limitation for uh, mechanical system. For example, it is very hard for you to go more than 100 meters per second in mechanical system generally I am speaking you can have exceptions, but it is very difficult for you to touch even 100 meters per generally the, uh, the mechanical systems operate somewhere between 5 to 10 meters per second. Next one is the maximum velocity with which it can move. Some other factors like the laser strength are changeable while others like shielded gas are usually constant. So, some other factors you see the shielding gas once you purge it with organ it is neutral gas, but whereas the laser strength for example, you can keep changing the power from 200 millijoule to 300 millijoule 300 to 700 millijoule 1 pulse to 10 pulse all these things are possible in the laser strength. So, this section we will also try to explain how these parameters affect the output parameter some parameters are exclusive uh, to only AM process while the others are common. So, what is there for AM common features is the, um, uh, the nozzle step size movement is exclusively for AM. So, these are the various input parameters 
for different different processes. Let us take laser powder bed fusion. When we talk about laser, you have power of the laser, wavelength that is lambda, you have blue laser, green laser, red laser, then you have beam profile, we saw the beam profile. So, it can be TEM00 mode, then Gaussian distribution mode, cowboy hat pattern mode, spot size is the least diameter, the smallest diameter which it can take, hatch spacing, hatch spacing we will see more in details in the coming slide, and then laser pulse what is the hertz we are using, shape of the laser TEM00 mode, overlapping, overlapping is first pulse, second pulse, third pulse, this is overlapping. These are the parameters of laser which is used, laser power, wavelength, beam profile, spot size, hatch spacing, laser pulse, then shaping and then overlapping. When we talk about heat treatment here, post process heat treatment to remove the residual stresses, we use this heat treatment process. When we look at uh, laser directed energy deposition, the specific parameter apart from all these things will be powder feed rate. When we look at binder jet process, you will have binder viscosity, printing saturation, drying time and sintering time. This is common with binder jetting process. Some of the common parameters for laser powder bed fusion and laser directed energy deposition, these are the material properties, these are the ambient properties, these are the powder properties and motion. When we look at the material property, substrate geometry, metal powder geometry, chemical composition, metallurgical, thermophysical, optical properties, then we have electronic structures, then powder rheology layer thickness and surface tension. Surface tension is in the melt pool. Melt pool, what is melt pool? This is a portion where the powder is melt, so that is called as a melt pool. So, in melt pool what dictates is the surface tension, because the surface tension will always try to roll it. Viscosity plays a very important role, temperature plays a very important role. So, these are all some of the material properties. When we look at ambient properties, preheating, gas shield velocity and shielding gas category. When we talk about powder processing, flowability, chemical composition, mesh size. Mesh size is directly proportional to the powder size. Okay. Motion devices, relative motion relative accelerations and system accuracy. These are some of the common parameters which are used. Process physics, before getting into the process physics, these are some of the physical phenomena which generally dictate the laser process. Adsorption, conduction, diffusion, melt pool dynamics, fluid convection, gas metal pool interaction, laser attenuation by power, rapid solidification. These are all the physical phenomena which try to dominantly play when we use laser or electron beam for additive manufacturing. So, here conductivity is very important, diffusion is also very important. Then fluid convection, Marangoni convection we study now. So, when there is a hot zone, cold zone, there is a vortex created, current created. So, gas melt pool interaction and laser attenuation by power. When we are talking about printing related, thermodynamic phenomena, solidification, binder imbibation, etcetera are some of the printing related matters. These phenomena influence the, the transition of raw material to solid geometry according to input parameters selection. So, this is very important transition of raw materials to solid geometry uh, depending upon the input parameters. The measurement and control technologies are being developed and implemented into commercial AM machines to monitor process physics in situ and change input settings. So, the control technologies. So, that is what we say we were discussing all about controls there are two types open loop and the other one is called as closed loop. So, when you are trying to develop technologies for a closed loop system, 
implement into commercial AM machines to monitor process physics in situ and change the input parameters. Here what is happening depending upon the response dynamically changing input parameters. So, this is very very important. So, what are the output parameters after manufacturing we try to do destructive and non destructive tests to measure the bulk qualities of the printed item. This include tolerance, distortion, mechanical, metallurgical and other qualities. Several ASTM standards are getting developed even now ASTM standards for additive manufacturing are in a very very premature way. Now, there is lot of development happening and standards are getting established over a period of time yes this will be done. Like ASTM you have many other standards which you have discussed in the past. Obtaining reproducibility, density, hardness, surface roughness, geometrical integrity is a difficulty for the additive manufactured industry. So, obtaining reproducible density, hardness, surface roughness and geometric integrity is a difficult for additive manufacturing industry. Additive manufacturing product quantities are geometry, microstructure these are all output product qualities, microstructure, hardness, cracks, porosity, residual stresses, roughness and dilation. All these things are product qualities which are output parameters of additive manufacturing. Geometry it talks about tolerances, microstructure, hardness, hardness and toughness, ductility all these things are together, cracks, porosities which come because of improper material flow, residual stresses, surface roughness and dilation. What is dilation? We will see that. Before that we will try to see melt spool dimensional characteristics. This is the substrate and on the substrate there is particles. These particles are laser hit or electron beam hit. So, now you see that there is a clad bead which is getting formed. So, which was like this, now it is forming like this. This was uh, initial, this is the final and this is a metal powder this is a clad ok this is a clad. So, metal powder is now getting when it is hit it is getting a melt spool and this is getting a layered clad bead. So, this is called as clad bead ok. So, h whatever is the h is the track height w is the track or the melt pool width this is melt pool width, this is track height H and W. Theta is the wetting angle. So, this wetting angle dictates how the fluid, the hot metal, molten material, how it can flow easily and how it can smear itself easily to the substrate. So, theta is the wetting angle and B is the melt pool depth, melt pool depth is B. Representing the thickness of the substrate melted during the DED process or laser powder bed fusion process and added to the track region. So, this is wettability, this is the bead depth. The powder bed fusion, the melt pool depth is considered to be B, whereas in DED H plus B is considered to be the melt pool. This is a very, very important point. If at all I ask a problem in the examination, you will have to keep that in mind. The powder bed fusion, the melt pool diameter depth is considered as B, whereas it is H plus B in DED. Why so? You please think about it and then let us discuss during the discussion hour. The other output parameter is going to be dilution. So, According to the previous figure which is given, uh, the dilution is nothing but B by B plus H. 
Alternatively, dilution may be defined as a percentage of the surface layer's total volume contributed by the substrate's melting. So, this can be written like this also. Rho C is the density of the melted powder alloy. Rho S is the substrate material. X S plus C is the weight percentage of the element. X is the total surface of the clad. X suffix C is the weight percentage of the element. X in the powder alloy percentage and X S is the weight percentage of the element X in the substrate. So, we can use this formula or this formula to find out what is dilution. Combining the thermal energy source parameters for uh, PBF and DED. These are some of the uh, parameters. Specific energy. The specific energy is indicative of input energy from the surface irradiated by the laser beam. So, power by V into D. What is V? V is the scanning speed and D is the spot dia. Okay. This is specific energy. Next is volumetric energy density. VED. Volumetric energy density VED is nothing but it is the amount of thermal energy received by each unit volume is called as VED, volumetric energy density. So, VED hatch can be expressed as power divided by VSL. What is S? S is the hatching distance, L is the layer thickness, V is the scanning speed. So, with this we will try to get the volumetric energy density. So, in melt pool we always look at volumetric energy density. Okay. In specific energy in grinding and all we look at specific energy. So, power divided by V into D, D is the spot diameter, V is the scanning speed. The spot size D provides an alternative definition more similar to specific energy, spot size D. Spot size D is VED, volumetric energy density spot, this is hatch, this is spot. So, both are important. So, this goes like P power divided by V into D into L, L is the layer thickness, D is nothing but the spot diameter, V is the scanning speed. With this, we will try to get the, the alternative to specific energy. So, these two we are trying to get here specific energy the volume is not there. So, beam scanning strategies, beam scanning strategies is the next important parameter. So, beam scan velocity, hatch distance, scan pattern, pre scanning and re scanning are the other things which are important. So, these three are very important. Scanning patterns, pre scanning patterns and re scanning patterns. So, these three are very important. Let us see that. So, all these things parameters are considered as beam scanning parameters and highly affect the microstructure, surface quality, internal porosity and mechanical properties of AM made parts. All these things are very important. Beam scanning parameter influences, highly affects the microstructure, surface quality, internal porosity and mechanical properties. So, all these things are very, very important, highly affect the microstructure, scan surface qualities, internal porosities. Different scanning patterns have been adopted to control residual stress and part distortion. So, first let us understand what are the different scanning patterns or strategies. Line scanning. Line scanning is the most basic scanning strategy which is achieved by following simple rectilinear scanning path for all the layers either in the x direction or in the y direction, x direction or in the y direction whatever it is x direction this is x and this is y. Okay. Changing the scanning angle from 30 to 45 to 67 etcetera etcetera are also possible for adopting different scanning angles for successive layers in a rotational manner 0, 90, 0, 45, 135, 45 etcetera etcetera are other options commonly practiced by additive manufacturing professionals. 
Amongst these angles, many machine developers use 67 between the layers, 6 to 7 between the layers. The island or chessboard scanning is another popular approach that divides the print area into multiple squares or randomly shaped smaller islands with different scanning types or angles assigned to each other. So, it is see in inside a paper you are trying to make some part. So, this is called as island scanning ok is another popular approach that divides the print area into multiple squares or randomly shaped smaller islands with different scanning types or angles assigned to each other in and out in scanning strategies that include a spiral motion. So, these are all some of the common strategic patterns which are used. You can see here islands of scanning. So, you can see very clearly I will just draw a checkerboard here. You see here it is just like a chess board ok or here in this you see here how are the different patterns done it. So, this is called as island scanning, these are called as line scanning, these are lines are rotated at 90 degrees you will see the first one is like this and the next one is which is on the top is like this. So, it is rotated scanning, then it is 67 rotational scanning, first time it is doing like this, next time it will go like this, this is 65 you also have something called as 45 degrees line scanning, then you have 45 degree rotation scanning. So, you first start like this, you rotate and you go like this, this will next time it will go like this. Next is in out, in out is from the in you start going out. This is also a strategic scanning pattern, then it is out to in. So, what we do is we start from outside and then we go towards in. So, these are some of the scan patterns which are exhaustively used today. So, you have island scanning, line scanning, rot 90 degrees rotate scanning, 67 rotate scanning, 45 line scanning, 45 rotation scanning, in to out scanning and out to in scanning. When we look at the powder properties, when you look at powder properties for our powder bed fusion, directed energy deposition and binder jet. The powder bed based additive manufacturing methods investigate material property under two categories. One is powder particle properties, the other one is bulk powder behavior. So, it falls into any one of these two categories. At the particular level, morphology includes powder size distribution, sphericity, surface roughness and skewness. These are all called as particle level or morphology included particle size distribution, sphericity, surface roughness and skewness, these are all at particle level. Determinants level, flowability, beam power interaction, final part quality, these are all determinants which are coming out. So, there are two categories which uh, the investigation can happen, one is powder particle properties, the other one is bulk particles. What are the powder properties? in additive manufacturing, powder characterization, PSD and particle shape affect flowability, these two are very important, particle size distribution, PSD and the particle shape effect affects the flowability. Chemical composition and the microstructure of the powder have been explored less, this is not many people are working in this area, it is a good area, so chemical composition and microstructural of the powder have been explored less. The particle size distribution determines particle bed fusion lateral and vertical printing resolutions and surface quality. So, if you look at the powder properties for powder bed fusion and DED and binder jet, so you will see powder properties, you will have natural properties, you will have morphological properties, natural properties, you will have microstructural properties, you will have chemistry. Then in the microstructural properties you will have internal porosities, crystal formation. In the chemistry you will have surface chemistry, bulk chemistry and then you will try to have powder performance characteristics and then you will try to have part uh, performance properties. 
So, these are something which is all done in the powder properties. So, powder properties you can natural, natural in turn is microstructural and chemistry, microstructure will have crystal form uh, and intra porosity you will try to see chemistry, surface chemistry and bulk chemistry. So, then you will see powder performance characteristics from there you will try to say part performance properties. When we go for morphological properties, it is surface structures, shape, particle size and distribution. All these people play a very, very important role. This graph or this table, this slide talks to you fully, fully about the different types of properties which a powder should possess uh, while doing powder bed fusion, directed energy deposition and binder jetting. Smaller particles improved print resolution and morphology. As particle size decreases, electrostatic interaction between the particle rises causing agglomeration and reducing the powder flow. Rough surfaces and wide particle size distribution and low sphericity uh, all increase inter particle friction and flowability. This is very important. What properties dictate? surface roughness, particle size distribution and low pericity all increase inter particle friction and flowability. So, the material will not easily flow and it does not get fall on the bed or while recoater is moved it does not get spread properly. A powder system with larger spherical particles and a smoother surface flows better, larger spherical particles and a smoother surface. So, low sphericity that is not good and then, uh, then it also talks about roughness and wide particle size distribution. Coarser particles with uniform size create powder bed with limited packing efficiency resulting in increased porosity. So, if it is all circular, all circular, so then what will happen you will have lot of space between this person and the next person. So, the uh, particle size, this is what it is. The coarse particles with uniform size create powder beds with limited packing efficiency resulting in increasing increased porosity. Ideal feed stock should be spherical with small enough particles to form high density powder bed. So, what they try to say is you have larger powders along with the larger powders you also try to have some amount of smaller powders. So, this will try to go lock in the necessary positions and try to create high density powder bed, but not so small that they would not flow correctly or even air bound and damage laser optic system or cause safety hazard. So, when we are going smaller and smaller and smaller you have two things, one is agglomeration A G agglomeration, the other one is going to be safety hazard. So, but not so small that they do not flow correctly or become air bound and damage laser optic system. Uh, so, you should try to choose a powder slightly larger, it should not be extremely large you get a coarser output, if it is extremely small then it will try to disperse and it will try to sit in the laser optics and damage it. The particle size range should be large enough for smaller satellite particles to fill the gap between the coarse particles and improve the layer density, this is what I said, but not so wide as the as that it limits flowability. The powder bed based system prefers a particle size of 100 microns. Powder flow qualities are usually reliant and the testing apparatus and experimental conditions. Different systems powder flowability qual qualities are not easily comparable, different systems are not easily comparable. One method of characterizing powder flow characteristics for AM evaluates the powders resistance to rotating and vertical moving table, powder resisting to, uh, to a rotation or vertical moving blade. Higher blade energy means more cohesive power, cohesiveness reduces the powder flowability. So, if you try to take a relationship diagram between the particle and the flow properties and the flowability, 
you can see here flow properties, interparticle force, powder properties and flowability. So, if you see here flow properties goes to flowability, rate of flow through an orifice, shear strength, flow energy, angle of response all the three are important. Avalanching behavior static and dynamic is also part of flowability. When we talk about powder property, it talks about morphology and it talks about particle size distribution. Moisture content, composition uh, so are also very important. When we talk about interparticle force, it is interlocking, friction, van der Waals force, surface tension, electrostatic interaction. So, all these properties fall under the interparticle force, electrostatic interaction, surface tension, van der Waals force. Van der Waals force or Van der Waals are very weak joints with other interlocking and friction. From here, when we talk about uh, flow properties, we talk about cohesive strength, permeability, compressibility, uh, the Hausner ratio, wall friction and bulk density. So, these are some of the uh, flow property related things. So, you can see here flow properties are related with uh, powder properties, interparticular force these two uh, lead to flow properties. From the flow properties, it leads to flowability. So, this is a very, very important table which or a figure which it is very useful for you to uh, analyze when you try to produce a part. The powder bed packing efficiency is affected by the bulk powder compressibility. More cohesive powder creates less compaction, more cohesive powder same sim similar powders, it creates less compaction because there will be a space in between them. The feedstock should have high flowability and low cohesion. So, it fluidizes when sheared by a powder bed mechanism. Feedstock should have high flowability and low cohesiveness. Cohesion is sticking. So, they, so it, it fluidizes when sheared by the powder. This is a vital to producing a high density item. This is vital to producing a high density item with a uniform homogeneous layer. Densely packed powder bed decreases thermal stresses and manufacturing problems like warpage. Layer density affects binder jet saturation and time. The next important thing we figured out is as far as flowability concerned is uh, the powder how is it getting produced. So, here we will try to see the four different types of ways in which powders are created. Generally, the powder creation process is called as automation. Automation means anything we are trying to split and then produce into small, small, small atoms or small, small, small volumes. So, water automation, gas automation, plasma automation and centrifugal automation are the four methods through which the laser powders are manufactured. So, water automation, in this technique the water is sprayed at a pressure of 500 to 1500 bar over melted material to form micro sized particles. The technique has a high yield and a large particle size up to 500 microns at a cheaper cost can be made. The technique yields irregular shape particles and cannot be handled reactive components this technique. The irregularity shape of the particles as well as the presence of satellites are two major challenges when it comes to AM. Irregular shapes of a particle and then presence of satellite, two things are very important which makes a challenge for this additive manufacturing. So, this is how the water method is. Water method is you have liquid metal coming and then you will you have a water inlet nozzle which sprays. So, here also it sprays. When it tries to spray on this, it instantly there is an apex which is formed and that after that instant it is all getting automated. So, you get a metal droplet powder which forms and then it falls on top of it. So, here it is a very, very easy process. At this process stop there is a melting which is happening. Then in the second stage it is automation happening and in the third stage it is particle solidification and forming and the fourth stage is the collection stage. The challenge is here. So, automation, so though it looks like pictorially very easy, but to produce this it needs lot of skill efforts. So, melting, automation, particle solidification and collection. The next one is gas automation. 
gas atomization is very similar to that of your uh, water. So, you have a melt. So, through this melt you will have a gas source which hits. So, from here all these things which are spraying here these gases. So, they will all try to spray in between the liquid. So, it will try to settle down and here it will try to have lot of metal powders which are getting generated. So, the gas whatever it is there we pump into the gas and this gas when it when it gets exhausted it tries to come inside the gas and then it gets uh, it you get to filter small powders and then the rest of the gas is released. So, when we look at here you see here there is a gas which is coming there is a gas which is coming and here there is a liquid metal which is getting poured. So, when it is poured it tries to form a several droplet of particles. So, gas expansion zone. So, you have a sheet so ligament and then ellipsoid. So, all these things are seen here. So, here in this process high velocity gas impacts a stream of melted material generating dispersal uh, and uh, particle creation. The gas pressure generally used is from 5 to 50 bar. The gas atomization particles have a spherical form and small satellites up to 500 microns can be done. The higher throughput uh, method works well in the reaction type. So, the next one is going to be plasma. So, you have a plasma torch, you have a plasma torch, melt wire spool is sent and then when the both the plasma meet at this point, it tries to melt and then whatever comes out is, is the output of this melting, it gets shattered and you try to get small particles. So, plasma automation, organ plasma torch melts and automize the feedstock into micro droplets. The feedstock melts at a temperature of 10,000 degree Celsius and more and generates 200 micron droplets. This method creates spherical particles with smaller size distribution is generated by plasma. Centrifugal automation, this is the last automation. So, spinning disc interacts with the molten metal to create a micron size particle. A spinning, so a droplet is drawn, so the spinning disc rotates. So, the droplet goes to different places and it tries to create the powder. So, spinning disc interacts with molten material to create molten size droplet. It makes fine powders. Inert gas, it requires less energy than gas or water in inert gas. The product has a lower oxidation formation. The lower yield and high system cost due to tungsten contamination is there and then Plasma rotating electrode automation produces exceptionally pure particles. So, these are the ligament formation which is there. Now, the last part of this lecture wire properties for DED. Wire fed DED technique with laser or electron beam energy source utilizes metal wire filament. Similar to the powder, the wire chemical composition and the dimensional uniformity might affect the melt pool. The wire feed rate and the orientation are significant wire fed process parameters. Wire feed rate is how fast the wire is supplied through the nozzle into the deposition region. The wire fed electron beam directed energy deposition the wire feed rate restrictions are set by the welding power since an extremely high feed rate results in incompletely melted material deposition. Very high speeds incomplete melted material deposition, feed rate, weld speed, powder determination, deposition dimension, cooling this geometry requires a knowledge on process parameters. Increasing the power widens the deposition while decreasing the height when it is a large energy. So, when the power is high, laser power. So, then what happens? The height. So, you take this as height. So, it will go something like this. Okay. So, increasing the power widens the deposition while decreases the height. So, the welding speed decreases width as well as increases length. It is the wire fed rate to welding speed ratio that decides or dictates the deposition area. 
So, here are the influence of increasing process parameters on dimension of a single bead produced by electron beam directed energy deposition, power deposition area is 0. Uh, so, deposition height is negative uh, and then the deposition width is positive. Speed, uh, the deposition area is 0. So, that means to say it is neutral, then it is positive means deposition height is more and then the deposition width is less. When you talk about wire feed rate lambda, deposition rate is positive uh, the, and the deposition height is negative and then the deposition width is 0. So, here it tries to compare the process parameters on dimensions of a single bead produced by EM. The layer thickness which I have been all the time talking about, this is called as the layer thickness. And this one is called as the staircase effect. Okay. Layer thickness of powder bed fusion or binder jet powder bed is uh, the DED layer thickness is track height. This parameter is important for powder bed fusion procedures. Layer thickness affects the resolution, surface quality and the build time. On curved or non-vertical surfaces, layer thickness causes a staircase effect. So, the small layer thickness can better resemble the parts surface, but slow production. The minimum layer thickness is governed by powder bed vertical movement precision and the feed materials largest particles. The powder bed fusion layer thickness varies on beam power, shape and speed. The maximum layer thickness should be less than the height of the melt pool formed by the parameter. Otherwise, some particles will remain unfused and the layer would not fuse entirely. The hatch distance determines the maximum value, hatch distance. What is hatch distance? This is what is the hatch distance. So, this is the uh, one belt, this is the another bead. So, in between you have a meeting point. So, that is called as the MO. So, you have a shorter, you have a longer. So, here when you do shorter H, shorter layer, so you what do you shorter layer head, uh, you try to have a a layer T. So, the maximum layer thickness T max is equal to the distance between the surface and the lowest point of overlap between the two adjacent melt pools which is called as M O D. The maximum layer thickness T max is equal to the distance between the surface and the lowest point and the lowest point of the overlap between the two adjacent melt pools. The larger the hatch distance, the smaller is the layer thickness needs to be avoided having unfused particles. For the binder jet process, a layer thickness must be chosen to guarantee binder moisten the entire layer. This depends on the droplet nozzle spacing, print head velocity, jetting frequency, wetting angle and binder viscosity. So, the ambient parameters for powder bed fusion and directed energy deposition Considerable energy required for the metal processing in AM system requires more monitoring and control of the environmental condition. Build chamber temperature and shielding gas are most important crucial ambient characteristics. The distribution of process temperature at many levels such as building chamber, powder bed surface, powder bed core and local beam, powder interaction area affects the quality and the printed components, melt pool size and type etcetera. This is a very important point. Process temperature at many levels such as build temperature provided this and this affects the quality of the printed component, melt pool size and the type. Built chamber temperature affects the microstructure and the mechanical characteristics. The temperature cannot be investigated as a separate parameter since its interaction with others especially the beam source power. Lower powder bed temperature and higher power causes distortion from the residual stress concentration. Increasing the powder bed temperature helps eliminate this issue at the expense of geometric integrity as well as loose powder particles fused together. 
especially near the built area causing a part expansion. Given the relevant of ambient temperature in the process, reliability and repeatability and methodology equipment like as infrared camera, thermocouple, embedded built heat beds etc. must be included in the powder bed fusion. Shielding gas blocks the, con the contact of the melting pool that reacts with the open gas. The types of shielding gas and the flow affects the melt pool size. Varied uh, shielding gas have different thermal conductivities which affects the heat transmission dynamics surrounding the melt pool. Nitrogen increases the thermal conductivity resulting in low powder bed surface temperature, faster cooling rate than organ. Important. The homogeneous gas flow is necessary for removing print by product that could impact laser material interaction. Electron beam based technologies require a high vacuum for the electron beam should not get dispensed. The, to prevent the electric charge forming in powder during the melting, a low pressure inert gas especially helium is supplied while doing electron beam. Beam strength, velocity, scanning approach are not static throughout the construction part volume very important it is not constant not static they depend upon the part geometry and position the commercial systems change parameters at contour up skin down skin so this is a skin core up skin down skin and the core is also changed layer by layer when it is start building contour is the outer edge of the layer which corresponds to the part interior and exterior surface Different process setting can be selected for printing a part up skin and down skin which solely increases the loose powder. For complex geometries each layer can have up skin, core and down skin regions. What are up skin, down skin? These are all skin core. This is up skin. So when we talk about geometric specific parameters, so you can see here build plate up skin, this is the up skin surface. This is the down skin surface, up skin surface, down skin surface, build plant. Okay. So, here you can see overlapping down skin, up skin and you have cores. This is the layer thickness. The last of this lecture support structures for PBF, overhanging hole bridge features necessitate support structure on powder bed fusion. Complex additive manufacturing components require various support structures. Post processing procedure are used to remove them, support structures which are built for overhanging holes and bridge features. This wastes and costs money. Optimum process settings are used to print overhang features without supports uh, for particular material. BJ and DED uh, do not need support structures. In DED, support structures can be avoided through trajectory optimization. The support structures dissipate heat. The powder bed fusion supports facility heat conduction to prevent residual stress concentration. Different densities and dispersion of support structures are added between the construction plate and the main part. So, these are all different support structures which are built. So, A is medium dense, B is low dense, C is highly dense and this is a part print part there is a overhanging structure and this is a support structure. So, now points to ponder from this lecture, major process parameters affecting print qualities for different additive manufacturing process has been discussed, common scanning strategies used in metal additive manufacturing is discussed. Methods for manufacturing metal powder and powder properties for MAM, wire properties in DED additive manufacturing technique, ambient properties and geometric specific properties for printing and support structures in MAM. All these things have been discussed in this chapter. So, assignments. Can we make a fishbone diagram? This is a fishbone diagram where you have output parameter this can be anything output parameter with several of these input parameters you can have. So, you can refer to any 
book or literature, try to develop a fishbone diagram for L, P, B, F, E, B, M and L, D, E, D, then wire D, E, D. So, these are all powder based, this is P, B, F, this is you can have it as wire based, extrusion based. So, make a comparison of the powder properties with wire properties affecting the print quality. So, take copper wire, take copper powder, aluminum wire, aluminum powder, take this and make a comparison so that you will try to understand more in details about metal powder and wire properties. Thank you very much.